Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another exciting edition of Biographic, a show where I, Matt, the Game Boy, take you through the highs and lows of the Game Boy library, one cart at a time. It's hardly Japanuary, but that's not going to stop us. Let's get into a Japanese exclusive title called Heisei Tensai Bakabon. A friend from work and I were recently chatting, and naturally, now that we can't talk about the commute, on the weather and all that, the topic turned to what we're currently streaming. Well, I threw around the names of some shows I was currently into, and he did the same. He was also keen to point out that once this next wave of shows he watches hits, then that's it. There's nothing else on the horizon because of the state of the world right now. While he was freaked out about the lack of new shows, I couldn't help but feel a sense of relief. For years, I've always tried to strike a balance between embracing both retro and modern games. In the same way, I try to keep both antiquity and classic novels along with the modern books in my reading pile. The reason being that we've got records of human expression going back a couple of thousand years. And maybe it's fine that we're about to enter a bit of a content drought, because let's be honest, even if we restrict our intake to modern mediums like games, movies and television, we've still got more to consume than any of us are ever going to be able to. So, naturally, rather than going back and reading some of the finest novels ever written, I'm going to use this breathing room to watch some anime, get a proper manga education and play games released in the 90s because, let's face it, Gundam probably has more to say about war than Sun Tzu, I'm sure. One creator's work I've long been curious about is actually Akasuka Fujio, who's been incredibly influential to manga as a whole. His huge list of credits includes such standards as Himitsu no Akano-chan, arguably the first in the magical girl genre, as well as having a huge influence on comedy manga with Osomatsu-kun, and the topic of today's video, Tensai Bakabon. The genius Bakabon, to give the manga its literal translation, first appeared in Weekly Shonen magazine in April 9th, 1967, and was first based around the hijinks of the titular character Bakabon. Now, anyone who's seen any anime probably knows already that Baka is the Japanese word for idiot or fool, which Bakabon most certainly is. However, the star of the manga would ultimately end up being Bakabon no Papa, the main character's nameless father father, with the format of the manga becoming him failing to accomplish the most basic tasks in a spectacular fashion. The manga fully collected spans over 38 volumes and it even spawned five separate anime series based upon the Bakabon family. One of those series, titled Heisei Tensai Bakabon, came out in 1990 and, like all anime of the era, spawned a number of video games. One for the Famicom, one for the Game Boy, and later, one for the Sega Saturn. There's also a Bakabon game for the Sega Master System, but that's unrelated to this particular series. Developed by Namco, the Famicom game came out on December 9th, 1991, with the Game Boy port hitting store shelves a few months later on February 28th, 1992. The game is, as you might expect, a pretty straightforward platformer starring Bakabon Papa, in which you must save his wife, Mama, and his younger son, Hajime-chan, after they've been kidnapped. The game takes place over four worlds, loosely themed around Bakadan Elementary School, where Bakabon goes to school, but thematically covers a lot of your staple Japanese platformer settings like shrines, space, and a factory. Given the nature of the manga and the subsequent anime, I'd like to think that this is a tongue-in-cheek nod to the silliness of such settings in games at the time, but that might be giving Namco a bit too much credit. However, it is worth saying that regardless of the developer's intent, the stages themselves are probably the most stereotypical thing about Bakabon, as this is really a game that tries to do something different with the genre. First of all, you can't kill enemies in the game, like at all. You can't jump on their heads or use a weapon, making them moving hurdles to leap over rather than something to be conquered with brute force. B instead is used as a run button if held down, but its primary purpose is for Papa to pull out a parasol to get down from high platforms. Because yes, the game has fall damage. Oof, I can hear you groaning from here. 
but you will have seen in me dropping off that platform a little animation play of Papa twitching from the damage, something you don't really see in most games. That's because the animation in this game is bonkers, and it leads to some incredibly creative gameplay. Jump for a platform that's too high for Papa? Don't worry, he'll grab the ledge, and after a comical little shuffle, he'll climb on top. Get too close to the edge? He'll wobble comically over it. I remember Disney animators bragging about doing this on the Genesis, and here it is on the Game Boy. Of course, it could be argued that the focus on animation is somewhat a detriment to the game's speed. Having so many frames of animation for every one of Papa's movements makes the platforming feel a little sluggish when doing even the most basic of jumps, let alone introducing gags like Papa skidding after running or going pancake flat if you don't stop. They're cute the first time, but they do get a little frustrating as the game gets harder. And that's putting it mildly, as the game can get frustrating as it goes on. I don't think I've said the words, ugh, of course, out loud to myself so much while playing a game in ages. You see, the game really does have its own logic that really jars you as a player. It kind of reminds me of playing a LucasArts adventure game in that respect, that you do need to think like the game designer in order to get it. But you know what? This actually becomes part of Bakabon's charm by the end of it. You learn how to play this game as the difficulty rises, and yes, that did annoy me at times, but it also gave me a strange sense of satisfaction I've not felt in playing a game for ages. It just clicked, and I ended up falling in love with the game because of its quirkiness. Now, just because I say I love this game doesn't mean it's without its problems. In its quest to seemingly deconstruct the genre, Bakabon plays around with how the player navigates the world for better and for worse. Instead of wall jumping, the player can get up to higher ground by either using Papa's umbrella as a pole vault, or by sandwiching himself between two walls and shimmying up. The latter is a little annoying, as you need to be facing the way you need to go before scaling the wall. But the pole vault is really fiddly, and I couldn't get the technique down the entire time playing it because of the game's impressive but ultimately annoying attempts to simulate realistic movement. The boss fights too, in their attempt to play with expectations, are a little off. There's both mini-bosses that Papa fights while wielding his umbrella as a sword, and a traditional end-of-world boss fight. The mini-bosses break up sections of each stage, and you'll fight them a couple of times as you progress. Then there's the proper end-stage bosses that are a little more challenging. First, there's a clown that you need to catch the balls with Papa's umbrella. The next is a frog who spawns point coins that you need to collect a total of 5,000 of. The third is a race from left to right, while the fourth and final boss wants you to jump on a specified number tile within 10 seconds of each other. These encounters do feel a little jarring if I'm honest, and more annoying than fun when they weren't easily beaten. The good thing about these encounters though, is that the game has unlimited continues. Papa only has one life, but dying will simply see you hit a continue screen and push you back to the start of the screen you were on before the boss fight. The game also offers a password system so you can pick up and play later. You can find a variety of things to help you run the stages to prolong the time between continue screens by uncovering beer to refill your health and a bowl of ribanira, Papa's favourite dish, to allow you to take an extra hit. There are also points hidden around the level, but as you lose these once you die, they're kinda pointless in my eyes. Two other little niggles for me lie in the game's forgettable soundtrack, and that the beauty of the Famicom's backgrounds are lost in the conversion to grayscale. But honestly, even with these additional complaints, I still feel the game has more positives going for it than negatives. All in all, while I wouldn't call a Heisei Tensai Bakabon a must-play game, I will say that it's a pretty interesting title. The animation is great, the gameplay good enough, and smart little design choices like using the umbrella to walk on a trapeze will undoubtedly bring a smile to that face of yours. The boss fights, general traversal, and some of the more finicky mechanics however probably won't, but if you go in accepting that this game is pretty balanced in its delight to disdain ratio, you'll probably come out the other side like I did feeling pretty good about the game and fans of the series will be glad to see a few familiar faces amongst the cast. 
From what I played of the Famicom version, the difference between the two games is negligible. They mainly consist of a few level redesigns to suit the smaller screen, so if the Famicom version is all you can get your hands on, then why not give it a go instead? However, in my experience of playing Parasol wielding platformers like DuckTales and Parasol Hemby, because of its slightly later release, the Game Boy version is probably the superior option. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'll be off to binge watch Late Night the Genius Bacabon on Crunchyroll. I suggest you do the same. And that brings us to the end of a longer biographic, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you've enjoyed. If you have, then please leave a comment down below and share it with people you think might be interested in the channel. I'll be back next week, Game Boys and Girls, with another episode of Biographic. But until then, be sure to game on.